Hello and welcome to another exciting video tutorial on the WeAre.xyz program. In this tutorial, I'm featuring the 3D mapping tool. I'm Coach Carol and I'm thrilled to guide you through this innovative feature, which is brand new to the WeAre.xyz program. And it should help you explore the fascinating world of 3D mapping and how it can help bring your family stories to life. I'll show you how to use the tool and what it looks like when it's placed inside your article or story of your ancestor in your We Are archives. So whether you're a seasoned genealogist or just starting out, you'll discover how easy and impactful it is to integrate geography into your ancestral narratives. So grab a seat and get ready to journey through time and space and we'll transform the way you visualize and share your family's past. Let's make our ancestors' journeys and stories visually compelling with just a few clicks. Don't forget after watching, try these techniques for yourself and share your experiences. If you want more help, of course, I have a course for you and the link to that course is below the video. So right now I'm excited to bring you Family History 3D Mapping with WeAre.xyz. Here I am in a page of my We Are archive and I'm currently looking at an article I'm building for one of my great uncles. And you'll see that I have the title here as the fourth button. And that refers to the fact that Sidney James Allery, my great uncle, is the fourth son of my great grandparents. The interesting story about Sydney was discovered only today. I was wanting to find out a little bit more about what he did in the war. So when I went looking for his military papers, I discovered that Sydney was held as a prisoner of war during 1918, and that was towards the end of World War I. So I wanted to share that story with you today. So I've started off here with a little explanation about where and why the prisoner of war camps were established in Germany during World War I. And of course, went across to Wikipedia to find some wonderful old photos, as you see here. So I don't think my great uncle was in that photo, but he could have been. What I wanted to do was to build a map to show where these places were. So I have it right here. This is an interactive map. And it's built on a little template that is inside your We Are program, specifically as one of the options you can put in place in an article. So I've established the map as being partly Germany and partly France down here. And I have put in place some pins, that's what we call these, to indicate the places that were pertinent to Sidney James Allery and his time as a prisoner of war. According to his papers, I discovered that he was captured at Saint Quentin in France. And as you can see, that's near Amiens. And then he was taken to, we're not sure where, but a place called Lager Castle in mid Germany as his first prisoner of war camp experience. And then was transferred to Parchim in Northern Germany where he spent the latter days of his experience as a prisoner of war. Underneath that, I've gone on to explain where I found that information. And you might have similar articles that you can refer to and even some images that you have managed to research. In this case, you're looking at the document that gives a list of the people who were prisoners of war in the Parchim just see that on the top right hand corner, a camp in Northern Germany. 
And you can see down here, Ellery, captured in St. Quentin on the 21st of March, 1918. So I've explained a little bit about that over here on my text. He was captured at St. Quentin, 1918. The note neck to blow means not wounded. And he was later taken to Lager Castle and then transferred to the Parcham Prisoner of War Camp. And from Wikipedia, I found out a little bit more that Parcham was a camp built on a former cavalry drill ground. What is that? About three miles or five kilometers from the town of Parcham. And the camp actually held 25,000 men. The theatres of war that are mentioned in that document, and it wasn't very much, just three names really, I have captured here. St. Quentin and Lager Castle and Parchim. So it's just those three that I put in the map. To illustrate a little more about what it was like on the return of the prisoners of war. Some people were lucky enough to get a letter from the King, King George, in fact. So I have this from Wikipedia, which is a copy of the handwritten letter sent to a returning prisoner of war and signed by King George. But coming back to the map, which is the subject of today's lesson, to put a map in place, this is what you do. Go to the Add button in the centre of your article and choose Map Row. This then puts in place the template that allows you to create the map, which is what we're going to do now. Create the map and give the map a title. So I'm creating this map of places of the prisoner of war camps in Germany. And create it. And it gives you the start of your map. All you do now is click into the map to put your places in place. So we'll add a place here with this add place. And we search for the areas that we want. So we want St. Quentin in France. And you can put in an image of the place, probably find something like that in Wikipedia. And then we go forward and we create another place and we'll put in Archam and found out that this is in the particular district of Western Pomerania in Germany. And it puts another little pin on the map. And you can see the names of the towns surrounding the pin, which might give you even more information about just where he was stationed during his experiences as a prisoner of war. Again, you can put in a, an image if you have one. And we'll put in place there that image that I had uploaded before of the prisoners of war. And you can put in a description of it here. And once again, save. You can also preview as you go. But let's save it again. And you'll see it now change to showing the map. And in this case, it's showing the, the spread of land between St. Quentin and Harcham. 
in the northern part of Germany. So fairly easy to do. You just follow the prompts, really. So now I have two maps. I don't really need that second map that I've produced for you today, so I'll get rid of that in a moment. The final thing to do, of course, once you've got your 3D map in place, is to publish. And then you can share the link. So I'm copying that now so that I can put that link below the video for you. And you can go and have a look at the 3D map that I've created in the story of my great uncle, Sydney James Allery. That's it for this short video. I hope you have a chance now to go and explore the 3D map in weare.xyz and create one for your ancestor. Good luck on your journey into 3D mapping at weare.xyz.